Hi, my name is Dr. Gus Reyes, and I want to welcome you to the Raising the Standard show. Uh, today's going to be a very special show. I am the director of the Christian Life Commission, and we, our verse is uh, Micah 6, 8. We like people to do justice, to walk, uh, to love kindness, and to walk humbly before our Lord. And we stay with that verse in all the work that we do. And so one of the things that we're going to be dealing with with this show today is, is helping you think about What's a good decision for your child when they consider college? And so this is going to be a really special time. I hope you can be with us the whole show, and you might want to invite somebody to come and watch because this could be very helpful to you in your future. I have with me today uh, Gideon Salazar, who is uh, uh, nine months into his marriage. And Correct. so are you writing a book yet? It's uh, almost about to get published. There, yeah. you, there you go, no. about how to stay married for nine months. <laughs> yes. Very good. So tell us, Gideon, what do you do? Well, I serve as the director for the Faith and Education Coalition, which is part of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference. We're housed at the Institute of Global for Global Engagement at Dallas Baptist University. Great. And we, uh, we, what we do is we engage the faith voice in the discussion of education policy, uh, K through 12, and really help help to try to raise the standards of education for marginalized students. Outstanding. Yeah. Well, I just want to give a shout out to Dr. Adam Wright for uh, Dallas Baptist University and their desire to help reach Hispanic students and help them become yeah. all that God wants them to become. And I also want to shout out for uh, Dr. Samuel Rodriguez uh, for the uh, president of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference because they came together with Dallas Baptist University to help do some special things for your children. Uh, across the country. So I hope you'll watch and be benefited from this particular program. Well, who's with us? Introduce our guest. Well, it's, we're, today we're talking about uh, how to choose the right university for your child okay. and, and being college ready. Okay. And we have wonderful guests. Our first guest is Dr. Corey Hines. He serves as the vice president for enrollment at Dallas Baptist University. Uh, prior to coming to DBU, he served for 13 years on staff at the Avenue Church in Waxahachie as, as a student minister and then executive pastor. He earned his PhD PhD in leadership studies from Dallas Baptist University. He and his wife, Melinda, have, be, have been married for 21 years, and they have two children, Mackenzie and Caleb. And we also have with us Dr. Terrence D. Espinosa. He is a professor of Bible and theology at Southwestern Assemblies of God University. He brings over a decade of teaching experience to the classroom and is most passionate about empowering others to read scripture so that it may affect every aspect of their lives. He and his wife have been married for 20 years and have four beautiful children. Wow. Dr. Hines, Dr. Espinoza, it's, we're, we're just glad that you're here with us. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Thank you, pleasure. Thank you. Well, let's just jump into this. Rising costs of college. Mm -hmm. I'm making a decision for my son or daughter. Do they go to ABC Secular State School sure. or do they go to your school? Why do I decide to go to your school? Sure. Uh, think of college uh, like the parable of the soils, parable of the sower. And you have, your seed goes in a different area and, and there's no guarantee for the outcome, but often the best soil is where you're going to flourish the best. You won't have the weeds choking you out or the, the rocks everywhere. And so while all universities are going to be great, uh, I think Christian University is mindful to stretch you both academically and, and really challenge you and help you grow there, but also we're mindful of uh, spiritual formation, your whole self. I know a lot of universities have chapel, they have other programs to engage the whole person right. and really help, help you not uh, wither quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so you, your doctorate is in what? Uh, theology. Theology. Emphasis in the New Testament. Okay, so you were kind of poised for being in a teaching in a, yeah. in a Christian university. Yes. yes. Uh, very good. And, and how about you, Dr. Heinz? Uh, help us again to answer the question, why does a parent and a student choose Dallas Baptist and, and or a Christian university versus a state university? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, I know that parents consistently uh, will go to a school like SAGU or DBU and, and ask themselves, what is, what is the value of right. sending my child to right. an institution that wants to be Christ-centered? And yeah. for us, we, we talk about the importance of it being not just a transaction, Mm -hmm. but rather a place for transformation. Oh, I like and, that. Uh, there's something yeah. to be said about being surrounded by a community of believers uh, that are teaching your children, that are serving your children, not just from the academic discipline standpoint, but how to truly integrate their faith yeah. with their teaching. And so that's one of the things that we feel like makes uh, a decision to send your child to a Christ-centered school a wise investment. So, so there's this big difference between a professor who's called Mm -hmm. to invest in the life of your son or daughter mm -hmm. and a professor that's not. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there are probably a lot of called professors in, in, in state schools, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they may not have the freedom right. and the, the opportunity to do the kinds of things that you do at DBU. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've heard, you know, uh, some rumors that uh, the classes start with prayer. 
That's exactly right. We uh, expect all of our professors, whether full-time or part-time, mm -hmm. uh, to, to weave into their teaching a faith into what they're doing. And so they'll start with a devotional thought. Mm -hmm. They'll start with prayer. Sometimes they'll ask students to, to give a devotional thought as well. Uh, because again, we feel the distinctive of a Christ-centered institution is to be taught by faculty that have a desire to honor Christ in the classroom. And that's what so, we so that's just in the theology classes, right? No, that would be classes like a, a Dr. Mark Bloom, who would teach in the College of Sciences. He would he would integrate faith in his. So in his whether classroom. it's history or English or math, it, it really doesn't matter. You're going to take this idea of prayer and devotion, and classes will start with that. Yes, because we want you know our, the purpose of our institution is to produce Christ-centered servant leaders whether they're going to be in ministry, whether they're going to be in law, medicine, education, it doesn't matter. And so wow. we want them to, to see that by their professors. Wow, that's great. You want to add to that? Oh, yes. Uh, our school is the same, same thing because for the same reasons. Uh, we, there's a book with a website called Operation World. And so we very intentionally have all the classes, whatever class you're in, pray for the country of the day. Oh. Sometimes you pray for, you know, twice, you know, two days for the country, some just for one day, some for a week. But the, the prayer guide has a daily prayer guide telling you the needs and then we're praying for videos are there sometimes. And so it's, it's a way to ensure that everyone is praying and that everyone is thinking about the same thing. And it's, it's just embedded in whatever, whatever you do, whoever you become, this is part of who we are. Yeah. So these institutions, uh, South, Southwestern and Simply God University, mm -hmm. Dallas Baptist University, both Christ-centered, mm -hmm. but we also know that it takes on its own kind of uh, personality in a sense. So how would you describe the personality at Dallas Baptist University, and then how would sure. you describe the personality at Southwestern? Sure. Good question. That's a great question. You know, one of the things that's important for parents is to understand the culture of the, of the institution. And, you know, it's great to go online and do research, but when you visit a school, you can really get a chance mm -hmm. to see the, the difference. And so what makes us distinctive is being in Dallas, we're able to, to partner with like-minded businesses and like-minded Christian leaders and have them involved on campus, uh, being able to be involved uh, in service learning throughout the community, uh, and being in Dallas affords us many of those opportunities. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Sure, we're a Pentecostal school, spirit-filled, and along with that is this egalitarian flair. If, uh, if you're male or female, whatever your background is, we, if you're called by God, we want to come alongside and help shape you, be part of that process. And so we, we you know, many of our students are first-time college students, college grads, and that's becoming routine, typical, and we, we encourage that and love that. And so this, this egalitarian, you know, multicultural flavor is what we bring, I think, to, to our school as well. I, I really appreciate what you said because if you're thinking about sending your son or daughter to college, hopefully you'll think about a Christian college, mm -hmm. but you might be thinking, well, Miko will be the first one of our family to go to college, or Miko's going to be the first one. Well, yeah. here we have two professors where their schools think about mm -hmm. that student mm -hmm. who's going to come, and they are the first one, and so they're a little bit sensitive to that. So mm -hmm. I really appreciate you bringing that up because uh, for those of us who were the first one, uh, that's a mountain to climb, right? Is, yeah. And so thank you for sharing that. Um, I was also going to ask you, Dr. Hines, um, I've seen this this uh, sculpture where Jesus is kneeling. Or you know, can, can you describe what the, why that's there at DBU and what what is the purpose and the message you're trying to get students to have? Yeah, thank you. So we have a, a sculpture on our campus that really tries to. Uh, portray the hope of our graduates, and that is to, to take on the heart of a servant, much like Christ did. You know, he, he said that he did not come to be served, but to serve. And so our hope is, is that our students would, would take up that towel, yeah. take up that basin, yeah. and serve those that the Lord has placed in their path, irregardless of their vocational calling. So, Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what about money? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, I'm sitting out there in the audience, and I'm watching today, and I'm thinking, well, it's great what these guys are talking about. I love it, but... School costs money, mm -hmm. so can you talk a little bit about scholarships or what kinds of things your university does to help these first-time students or, yeah. or Hispanic students? Yeah, in most schools, uh, in SAGU as well, most students who go there have financial aid of some sort. There are grants, there are breaks, there are things we can do, and our financial, financial aid office is really intent on doing everything we can to find the most to help every student go there. So most students... Everyone has some sort of aid there as well. And financial aid, um, school debt is different than credit card debt as well. So it's not, you don't want to just do that to go to school. But if you do take loans out, that's different than saying, here's my charge card and put right. tuition on the bill. It's, right. it's a different type of, of, of system. Yes. I, I think that's huge because if you get a government loan for school, mm -hmm. um, they don't charge you interest. Right. 
until nine months after you right. graduate or quit school, one or the right. other, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. where, But if you put a credit card down, they exactly. start charging interest the moment you right put it away. down. Right. And so we won't mention names, but, you know, <laughs> but this is why, you know, it, it may have some value to think about a government loan, you right. know. And so what about DBU? What are you doing to help with Hispanic students? Well, much like what uh, our friends at Southwestern do, you know, we have financial aid counselors that meet individually with every family yeah. uh, to try to help them figure out their, their, their path to be able to achieve a goal. And so uh, while students can qualify for certain grants, you know, some of the things that we work really hard is partnering with churches uh, that will match a scholarship wow. for any student up to $3,500 per year. And so DBU has worked really hard to develop close relationships with churches because we feel like if a church is willing to support a student, mm -hmm. that's a student that our donors would want to support as well. Mm -hmm. So if a church through offerings or however sends money to DBU, mm -hmm. up to $3,000 a year, mm -hmm. right? $3,500. $3,500. And then the school will match that. That's seven thousand dollars off right. your tuition bill right off the bat. That's right. And of course, that would be in addition to any other scholarships and grants that they could qualify for, and mm -hmm. um, and things like that. So yes, sir. Wow. It sounds to me like uh, these Christian universities want. Hispanics to come to their schools yeah. and are ready to serve them and, and do whatever they can to, to ensure that they not only make it in, but are making it all the way through. Right. right. Yeah. Right. We really right. appreciate that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so when students graduate from universities mm -hmm. and you connect with them, what, what is their memory? What is their favorite thing mm -hmm. about your university? They say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. You know, what is that? Well, for us, our, our students talk about the relationships that the faculty had with them. And you mentioned earlier about faculty that feel called mm -hmm. uh, to serve at DBU, much like uh, our, our friends at Southwestern. You know, our faculty members invest and they mentor their students. And they're not just professors that teach, but they really do life with our students. And so when you ask them about their memories uh, at DBU, they, they talk about that professor that wow. intentionally pursued them and sure. intentionally helped develop them to fulfill the calling that God placed in their lives. That's great. How, how big are your classes? Uh, average about 12, 13 students per class. Wow. I went to a state school and I was like 300 <laughs> right. in this auditorium. I, I think the professor knew me as a number, but they never knew me person. And right. you could be absent or not, they would never know, you know. But uh, with 12 people, if Miko's not there, you're going to know. Right? <laughs> right. That's right. That's right. Well, well, Doc, how about yours? Sure. And similarly, uh, as friends at DBU, uh, this is the faculty uh, student ratio is a nice, a nice 20s or so or thereabouts, and the faculty, at the end of the year, we have a chapel where we talk about memories, talk about you know, mm. seniors who want to speak about their oh, experience, great. and they invariably mention the faculty mm -hmm. and the connections uh, in the hallway, they know them by name. Wow. Often during the prayer session, we'll give opportunity to pray for something. So the whole class is praying for you or, wow. or your friend, and the teacher remembers that, and so they say, how's so-and-so doing? And this is something that just regularly comes up whenever you pull students, whenever you give them a chance to talk about it, it's this connection, mm. this feeling of belonging at institutions wow. such as, our, as ours. Wow. It's such an important, uh, marker in, in the Hispanic community is, is connection, is family. Yeah. And I think to be able to choose a university uh, that's going to value you, not just make sure you're, you're doing well in your grades, which is important, mm -hmm. but also that you're, you're being a part of the institution, your right. family, that you're, right. you're the students, the other students there, the faculty there, that you're there yeah. uh, learning together, serving together. Right. Well, that's a huge benefit. And I think because you're schools of faith, you, you may know the families, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Dad may go there, or mom may go there. You know, once you get going, that becomes a family school, right? right? Mm -hmm. You're like, well, we all go to this school, you know. And uh, so I, I think there is something for you to consider when when you evaluate where your son or daughter might go to college. And um, it has to do a lot, not just the dollars, mm -hmm. but it has to do with what are you going to get out of your investment? Who's going to influence them as they make decisions for career, mm -hmm. for spouse, mm -hmm. Uh, and what professors are going to invest into their lives as well. So right. I, I, we're going to come back and visit about that just a little bit in a few more minutes. So I we're committed to raising the standards and we're committed to helping our students do the very best they can. Doc, you mentioned something in our break about uh, financial aid and maybe you could share that with us as well. Yeah, there are certain federal loans that once you graduate, not only can you defer for a while after you graduate, but then you can uh, apply for what's called income-based repayment. And so you, you do your tax, pay your taxes and send the number into the IRS or the, the lending agency and they'll make sure that you're not paying a certain percentage of your income beyond that. And so whatever you're making that year, you're not going to pay half your salary to student loans. It'll be capped at a certain percentage. And it's a program that the federal government is insuring. So if you do get federal loans, that's another benefit. Um, so is that pretty new? 
I think it's been around, but I think it's been a thing where they don't always talk about it, yeah. and it's not really widely known. Yeah. Okay. But it does make it a lot easier. Um, and, and I also want to make sure you know that um, uh, it's really important for parents to do their taxes early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you do your taxes, yeah. your son or daughter can then apply and do their FAFSA uh, application. Mm -hmm. And, you know, FAFSA starts out with all this money, but the later you wait <laughs> yeah. to do your taxes That's and right. your son and daughter can have the information, that pile, that pot gets smaller, smaller, yeah. smaller, and pretty soon there's not much money left. Mm -hmm. And we want your son and daughter to get yes. as much as they possibly can, the maximum for college. And so, please, mm -hmm. as soon as you get your income tax, your W-2s, yeah. what have you, yeah. get your taxes done early mm -hmm. so that your son and daughter can benefit from that FAFSA application. Mm -hmm. And so, well, Dr. Hines, what do you want to let us know and let parents know when they consider choosing a university, what do you want to let them know about DBU? Well, first off, uh, DBU is honored to have any family that would come and choose to spend time uh, on our campus exploring what the Lord may have them because time is so precious with families. And uh, so I would just encourage them to, to take a take it time out of their calendar and to come visit our institution Amen. and uh, walk around and get a feel for, for who we are and, and really begin to understand that we're an institution that seeks to produce Christ-centered servant leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're about, uh, irregardless of, of their calling. We've got over 70 undergraduate programs. Uh, we have uh, unbelievable uh, programs for them, whether it's education, ministry, pre-law, pre-dental, mm -hmm. uh, pre-PT, you know, any of those uh, callings, DBU can help uh, prepare students for that. But I guess the biggest thing that I would wanna say is, um, we just want students to be where the Lord's called them. Amen. And we feel they can only determine that when they visit an institution. Amen. And don't you have some kind of a new facility where the professors will live or the students or some kind of a new program? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, our fall 19, we're launching a, a new uh, campus, part of our campus called Ford Village. And it'll be a learning living community. And it'll be an opportunity for faculty members and staff members to live together uh, with some students and very intentional mentoring. Wow. And so it'll be an opportunity for them uh, to really learn and live out what it means to be a Christ-centered servant leader. So it'll be interdisciplinary. So there'll be students maybe that feel called to ministry, there'll be students that feel called to be in education, students that called to, 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 to want to be business professionals, uh, living with a faculty member and a staff member in a context about growing together and doing life together. In so, that so if I'm a faculty member, I have to. I would be moving to that facility, or well, you know, we're taking applications for that. As you can imagine, it's very competitive okay. because we have a number of, of faculty members that feel very strongly about walking along alongside students. So this is not going to be an eight to five job. This is going to no, be a kind of a yeah, twenty four seven. Yeah, yes. it's it's much like whenever uh, I was an undergraduate student and I had a, a resident assistant on my hall mm -hmm. uh, that was a nineteen or twenty twenty one year old. It would be much like that is that you would have a faculty member to staff member there living amongst the men amongst the ladies doing life with them and truly investing in them and mentoring wow. them very intentionally and you have buildings that are being created and built just for that purpose that's exactly right designed specifically just for that wow. very exciting yeah. pretty neat yeah. well doc what can you tell us about southwest sure. i'd like to second the idea of visiting the school we have all schools have regular times to visit and yeah. even if you can't make that time uh, SAGU will make any time. If you can visit any time, we'll have people there to walk you through, let you into classes. But that, that face to face experience is really often what determines where you decide to go um, because you meet it, you, you just find you fit there. Mm -hmm. And at our school as well, the, uh, again, the, the spirit filled kind of Pentecostal nature really does, uh, if God fills you, if God calls you, he wants you to, to go there and do that and find who you are in Christ, male, female, high or low socioeconomic status, just everyone. We, we were there for you. Uh, similar to DBU, we have faculty who are committed to that, committed to education, and, and, and really want to walk alongside there. And we have you know, ministry, of course. We have all those programs. We have you know, a whole variety, education, um, um, communication, uh, this whole psychology, a wide range of opportunities for you. So, so, so when, when is chapel, and is it voluntary? Sure. Uh, chapel is was five days a week. On Monday, it's a dorm devo, so you're in your dorms later at night. Okay. Tuesday through Friday, it's mandatory, and it's in the mid-morning hour. And so it's five times a week at our school. Okay. So is it like a half an hour or is it an hour? Uh, it's or? about an hour. Yeah, so 45 minutes an hour. And good preaching and mm -hmm. good ministry and oh, yeah, yeah, you worship come, music. You sing, you communicate, you connect, you do all that. You have sometimes guests come in. Okay. We had a student speak today, regularly student speak okay. uh, as well. And just really, there's a whole variety of people who come in. And it's just a place we don't want to replace church, and they're very intentional. Right, right. This is not 
church, but this is part of who we are. Good. And we want you to, to have as many experiences as you can. When you choose these schools, again, it's, it's, in addition to academics, it's trying to find where you want a circle of influence when you leave. Yeah. Who are they connected to? And yes. so our chapel experience is a great opportunity yes. to connect with all variety of people. Well, and you want your son or daughter, if they're going to college, university, you want them in chapel. Mm -hmm. You want them hearing yes. from God. You yes. want them worshiping God. You want them around people who are gonna be worshiping God. Yeah. So when you start to weigh those factors, yeah. you're thinking, well, maybe Christian university is not a bad idea, yeah. you know. What about chapel for you guys? When do you have it? So we have chapel three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, from 10, and since we're Baptist, 10 to 10.50, <laughs> and we stop right at, at 10:50. Okay. Um, and so it's it's mandatory. You know, yeah. there's so many uh, so many times that they have to be there, and we scan their their IDs. And uh, much like our friends right. at Southwestern, we'll we'll have a time of worship, typically led by students, and then we'll have a speaker. Uh, sometimes it's an on-campus person. We had Lee Strobel yesterday oh, wow. okay. uh, speak, and so we'll have different guests come in and speak as well. So it's a good time to to be together. So, so, go ahead. Oh, my question, we asked earlier about maybe students' experiences. But what's an what's experience that stood out to you on campus that said, man, this was a great experience with me and a student that I just remember, and, and it's just something that the Lord has allowed to flourish on our campus. So an experience you had at DBU, experience you had at Southwestern that you just remember and says, man, this was just an awesome time mm -hmm. uh, that I can just remember. I can remember very vividly, if I, if I may, yes. I can remember very vividly uh, meeting a first year student uh, the first day of chapel uh, that just came and I just was just, uh, uh, and, uh, not a circumstance, but it was the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. had a chance to meet him, had a chance to introduce myself. And through that process, we began a mentoring relationship and now to see him now and how the Lord has grown him, see his confidence, mm -hmm. his, his, the depth in his faith. Uh, that's a story I think about whenever I hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, uh, office hours for us, we were very clear to meet and be open. And so students come in regularly and sometimes it's just for 10 minutes. Other times you talk for an hour and you connect with the student, you find out about their story and you see what they need. And, and just this regular connection, uh, if, whether the freshmen through seniors or they're there for a semester, mm -hmm. is often the best time of day. And I tell them, this is, you know, you're not a bother. I'd much rather talk to you than do this paperwork or, you know, I'll get that done later, but you're important. Go out to coffee. I mean, it's just that, that personal connection is really meaningful experience. Yeah. Well, uh, praise the Lord for Education Sunday. We hope you get involved. Doc, what is one last thing you'd like for folks to know about Southwestern and why they should go to a Christian sure. university? Yeah, we, uh, we say this every year. Uh, we want you to go where you're called. You pray about it visit schools, visit people, really do all your research, but go where you're called because when times get tough, things are challenging, that calling will sustain you. We hope Amen. it's with us. We do our best to make sure that's a great place for you. But there are lots of places to find good soil to grow in Christ. So you need to be where God calls you to be. We feel like, yeah, yes, we want you to go where God wants you to be. If you're looking for a school that wants to prepare you in ways that you can't be prepared, maybe in some other institutions, we feel like Dallas is a good place for that to happen. Amen, amen. Well, we hope that you will pray about Talk about, consider visiting a Christian university as you or your son, uh, you or your daughter are thinking about university. Think about it, pray about it, make that visit. Come to visit these universities and see what God's going to do in the life of your son or daughter as you and us as we work together to raise the standards. God bless you.